Welcome to Strata. I'm Glenn. And I'm Brandon. Welcome to the Minds on Muscle podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a beautiful special edition of the Minds on Muscle and Clay's Cortex podcast. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Minds on Clay's muscles. I think it's going to be oh, a good episode. <laughs> Clay's muscular cortex. <laughs> oh, the muscular cortex. I think this is going to be a good episode because I really think, Clay, your muscles make me excited. And I think Man. if we explore that a little more thoroughly, it will be good. So tell us about yeah. the dope dad muscles. Dope the dad dope muscles. dad muscles. You're referring to my hat. Yeah, um, the dope dad muscles. You know, I've, I've realized now that you know, once you have kids, you just wake up strong. So it's kind of like, what's the purpose of training? You know, no, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. But yeah, man, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, we've obviously been waiting to do this for a little while. It's kind of been back and forth. My schedule, watching the kids in the morning has been a little nuts, but I'm excited to talk about this podcast. And it's always great to see you guys, right? Just talk with you guys. And so I'm excited to kind of get into this and what we're going to talk about. So it'll be fun environments and, and what else are we talking about? Modes of contraction, Modes of contraction. and being ah. a dope dad. So dope if, you're, dad. <laughs> if anybody's a first-time listener, Clay has his own podcast, uh, podcast, Clay's Cortex, and Glenn and I have a podcast, Minds on Muscle, and we are all muscle system specialists. Glenn and I are in Canada, Ontario, Toronto region, and you are in Seattle, right? Yeah, I, I, that might be a bad thing to say, I guess, with what's going on with <laughs> stuff. I'm just kidding. Anyways, yeah, I'm a little bit outside Seattle, about 20, 20 30 minutes um, from downtown Seattle, but yeah. That's where we're, we're, uh, we're at. So it's good. Awesome. So the three of us thought this would be a fun thing to do is to collaborate and talk about some things that we experience as certified muscle system specialists on mm. a day to day and see how it influences our clients. So Chris, you brought up a great point. You just want to talk about environments. Do you want to mm. kick this thing off? Yeah, I can. Um, sure. Uh, so environments, right? So I think environments, I know we, we were dialoguing about this a little bit, but environments I think are pretty crucial, right? And so uh, I, think, I think why this made a lot more sense to me is throughout my training career, uh, I just got my first space technically like five years ago. Uh, well, actually, it'll be five years this in 2021. It will be my five years at the, the kiln, but, uh, it, which is great. But before that, I was having to rent from other gyms or whatnot, and, um, which was good, build a relationship with them and so forth. But I realized even if the places environment that I was at, some people didn't really gravitate towards that culture or environment that, you know, what the other gym, but I realized that I as the, the, the exercise professional muscles, specialist, strength coach, whatever your title is, somebody that used exercise to help people. Right. <clears throat> I realized that I set the tone of the environment. And so I realized that the environment that people can operate in is huge. And so if they feel like they're safe, I went on this whole journey of looking into culture and that kind of stuff. And I think we talked about this, but I went to the other side of like, well, what turns culture into cult? I didn't want a cult. So <laughs> I wanted to build a culture. And so I realized your environment's crucial. Um, and that entails a bunch of different things, but that's kind of what I meant by environment. And obviously that's like music, my body language, other people's body language. There's a bunch of different factors in there, but if people are placed in an environment to where they can grow and flourish, um, you'll see good things happen. So I think it's a contributing factor that I don't think a lot of people pay attention to is the gym clean, especially with now Corona, right? Or sorry, COVID. The, the COVID, my wife likes to say. <laughs> um, but, you know, does the, is the gym clean? Do people feel safe there? I mean, it's a huge factor. So environment plays a, a big role, you know? So, I mean, what have you guys seen from, from that? You know, it's, so it's funny because what comes to my mind is uh, two things come to my mind. First is that I don't think a lot of people actively consider culture when they think about choosing their gym or their exercise experience. It's just not top of mind. They think, oh, I have these goals. This place is supposed to be good for those goals. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go there, whether it's a boot camp or like a, like a big box gym, like an LA fitness or a CrossFit. They don't necessarily think about the culture, but it's interesting because we're having this discussion about how culture molds you and it's mm. very true. And it's from my experience. It's one of the reasons why I ended up coming up to Strat is because I see the culture that's here and I know what I want to create for myself. And I know by just being here and just applying myself here, it's going to happen just by virtue of being in the right environment. It's not even necessarily about having to set goals. I mean, you have to do that, but being in the right environment and just taking action within that environment, I think really pushes you or pulls you, I should say, 
like a long distance, like 80% of the way. Right. And mm. I was just telling Brandon the other day, like, I'm so glad I'm here just because just by being here and spending like six, seven, eight hours a day here, I'm becoming better. Even, I'm, even though I'm just, I'm not even thinking about necessarily what I'm doing until I'm here. I'm just taking the actions that this place allows me to take within its culture. And it's really moving me forward in my career with my clients. So those are the things that I'm thinking about. I don't right. know. What, I always say when I'm doing any sort of like teaching or mentorship with the guys here that you are your brand. Right. And it's so easy that you, the way you wear your hat, the way you do your hair, the shirt you wear, the way you poise yourself in the gym, all that is your brand. And even if you're unaware of it, if you're at a big box gym and there's all these treadmills circling you of people doing cardio, they're watching you. They got Mm -hmm. the eyes on you and they're like, Hey, that Curtis guy, Hey, that Glenn guy, he's doing something interesting. Even if they have no clue what you're doing, the way you stand, you orient yourself. It's really, really important. But then like you said, the actual room and the space that you're in and the shape of it, the smell of it, the what's on the ground, what's on the walls, every single thing starts to create this kind of geocentric referencing for the brand. Mm. So you got you, and then you got the shapes of the stuff that you're around. When I worked at a gym for a while where I was the head trainer, it closed down and it sucked. And me and my team, we dispersed and we started renting space to all these different spaces. And I was at this gym up the street and it was a, I mean, Maximum Fitness, right? I did yes, study group yes, for a while. Yes. I taught an RTS there. It was a great gym and I had a great financial deal. It was awesome. But the people that ran the whole space were brutal. They were rude. Mm. They were snobs. They would clean the machines with bleach. So the room would always smell like bleach. And when I was having, yeah, it was crazy. I had these, <laughs> it was brutal. And I'd have these fragile folks come in that wanted to get stronger and they'd walk past all these sweaty, stinky, bleach filled machines. And they'd be like, you know, I like seeing you, but this is not quite what I'm looking for. And every space really does influence the client. And same with you. I mean, so we're actually open five years as of September 1st, which is crazy. And one of the reasons why I wanted to open this space was exactly the same reason as you, is that I wanted it to be not a cult, not a hierarchical thing where Brandon's in charge or Glenn's in charge, that we're all a team as a clients and people working together for this lifelong pain-free exercise mission. But this place has to show that it's got to look different. It's got to be different because it has to differentiate from gyms and other spaces. You go to a Mm -hmm. Pilates studio or a yoga studio and you smell those burning incense and you see dangly crystal beads hanging off the wall, you know where you're at. Right. Some right. people love that and some people don't. So I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's, it's so important. I mean, if you were to go see family doctor, this brilliant mm-hmm. family physician, you go into a nice clean clinical room, you're going to instantly have a different impression of this individual. But if they're standing there wearing flip flops, their toe hair is hanging out and they're in their basement with shag carpet <laughs> on the wall, you know, that's instantly going to change your impression of them, regardless of what comes out of their mouth. Right. Can yeah, you imagine, can you imagine a place you walked into where, wall to wall shag carpet on the walls as brendan suggested just burgundy shag carpet not even on the ground just on the wall i'd scratch my back for sure <laughs> <laughs> well i think i think with that i guess the tangent what's funny though is like i think of like i've never witnessed or seen that right but i like maybe like a movie like i think ron burgundy like i know you said burgundy but i'm like i wonder man you know carpet on the walls you know yeah it's gentle on the walls but yeah man i i, I totally agree i mean i think that the environment that's created can allow people to function better. And what's kind of interesting though, is the history of our interactions with this world cause us to respond in certain ways. And so the hard part is, is if you like when I was at those other places, right? Like you're at the place with the bleach, right? Their, their, uh, their incense was bleach, which is wild to me. Um, they may, tr- something may trigger a bad experience of smelling bleach of, seeing sweaty meatheads or whatever it may be. And then they might be deterred. So then what I realized when I was renting from other places, I had to make a much more uh, intentional effort of really getting them to focus here when we're talking versus all around us. And it was an intentional effort over time, which is hard. And then that's when I, like you just said, opening that space there in new market is I was like, you know what? I've got to open something that people feel safe. It's what they're looking for and so forth. And so I think, cause I work with a wide variety of people, I think around town, people think I just work with athletes. Right. And, and then they're like, Oh my gosh, you work with adults. I'm like, yeah, you got muscles, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, I, and then like, Oh, then I got a lot more adults coming in and that kind of stuff. And I think they really enjoy the intentionality because I don't think that I was the deterrent. They were coming to see me to work with me, but it's just like, working through that process of like, okay, how do I build this environment to where, okay, everything has a place. Everything's clean. Uh, the, he's intentional. Like, dude, the, the person is vetting you from the term, time they walk in the door, right? Oh, huh, this place is clean. 
it's put together. Oh, they've got things hanging up in order or whatever it is. And that adds to the environment and experience, you know? And then you get people that are just like, you know, there's people who can just live in mayhem. They're like, wow, it's cool. It's a cool place. They don't look at the little details, but then you get the people that are focusing on the details. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, I like this environment. It's a little bit different, but it allows me to be safe and be real and stuff. And I think that plays a huge factor. I mean, words also, I think, play a huge factor in building an environment. Um, but I mean, there's just a bunch of routes you could go with that. I th- I, and I think what Glenn said was kind of cool is where you were like, I don't think people factor that in as much, right? No. The, like the environment. And, and that might be something that people need to, to vet and or interview, I guess, or whatever it is to figure out, like, you know what, I can really vibe in this culture, you know, or this community. And I feel like the, these people that are the professionals here, they listen to me, they speak to me. So I think that that's crucial when people are looking for a gym, personal trainer, access, whatever it is, understanding that, you know, I, I do want to be a part of this. This person does care about me, which can ultimately help with the environment, you know? So I think I ultimately mean, it starts to actually help how good of results an individual can get because I was just listening to this thing this morning about sleep and how Mm. if you're sleeping in a foreign environment, you never fully go to sleep. I think Glenn went referencing because if you're never fully asleep, your body's kind of half guarded all the time. Well, Mm. if you're going into an environment that you're uncomfortable, either you're a new person in that environment or something about it just doesn't quite make you feel like you can be yourself. If you've always got a watchful eye, you're nervous that that Curtis guy is going to come over and give you some correction technique and it's going to be mean. If you're always nervous about those kind of things, then you're never going to fully relax. You're never going to get a chance to completely focus and be present for the experience that you're in. If you can't be present for the experience you're in, how could you ever go to 100% effort of whatever it is? I don't even mean mm. really lifting heavy weight, but focusing on that contraction, focusing right. on that control. And that's where I mean, I think about when I go to the bank and I'm like, I got to go do some banking and I got to do some, I gotta, we got to play with some investments here, move things around. And I go up and I see that teller that I don't like, you know, that one that's chewing bubble gum with the snarl on her lip and she's got <laughs> hair and hair and it's not good. And you, go up <laughs> and you just, you actually leave and you come back a half hour later to talk to somebody else. I love my bank. I love the person I work with, but that teller who's the gatekeeper, that experience ruins it. Mm. And I just lose focus and I can't handle it. If you're in a dirty environment, it smells like bleach. Glenn's walking around with his shirt off, you know, totally different vibe. Some people might be into that. I was going to say, I think you miscalculated that one. Like, <laughs> that's that's uh, net positive, but that's that one rep, get a little flex, you know, I get that. I know I'm not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think the hard thing becomes, are you create, are you trying to create an environment that's conducive for everyone? Or are you trying to create an environment that caters to our demographic and our specific demographic, which is the juggle? Hey, you know what, man? I think that's a huge thing too. And uh, like, dude, I listened to, there's this guy, he, j- he just started a podcast and he does, um, he's like a business partner with uh, Eric Cressy. He's a big baseball guy here. You guys might've heard of him, maybe not, but um, yeah, Cressy he's great. I, I, I think he's great. I got another story, but that's a complete tangent. Um, but the, the business guy for him, his name's, I'm going to say his name probably wrong, but it's like Pete Dubois or whatever it is. And um, he posts some really good stuff and he posted this thing where he said essentially, you know, it was along the lines of, you know, if you are bored at your job as a exercise professional or a trainer or whatever it is, let me just pull this thing up. And I was just like, wow, it's a really good perspective. And obviously he's coming at this from a business standpoint, right? Mm-hmm. He Peter, said, Peter, to Peter Dubois, is that what you said? I think it's Dubois, but I, I don't want to butcher that. Peter Dubois? Dubois? He, he's yeah, a, sounds like French that. Canadian. Sounds French Canadian. Yeah. Probably oh, not. Dang it. Probably Anyways, not to do a French Canadian accent. I Continue. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. I can't find it, but um, it was something like, if you're bored because you're getting the same clientele through the door, right? If you're bored, you're like, oh, I'm doing the same things with people. Not, not exercise, but I'm getting the same injured people. I'm getting athletes only that play one sport or whatever it is. He goes, stop complaining and realize that you've put a foothold in your area, right? And I was like, when he, it was like simple stuff, right? We're like, oh my gosh. But I think that when you try to, and we know this, but then like innately, we all, this is with any profession. We don't know this. We're like, we want to, we want to please the masses. I mean, to be real, how we do things here and probably how you guys do things there. Some people don't want to be that involved. They don't want to be that conscious or involved in their process. They might want somebody that's the, listen here, Mrs. Jones, you're going to do those burpees. Keep going. I'm going to change my tone of voice and you're going to love it. And you're going to, when you leave, 
Yes. And so people need that. Right. Which is cool. Um, you know, but I think the biggest thing though, is like, if you want to say injury free and pain free, you might want to go to somebody that's being intentional in what they're doing. Right. I mean, you, you, somebody's going to truly assess you and not just do an assessment. That's going to, Oh, my trainer does an assessment. Well, what's he do? I don't know. Did he talk to you about why he did it? No, it's just standard. It's like, wait a second. Right. What are you using the information? Sorry. What are you using the information for? Right. And so I think that some, it, we're not, I'm not the cup of tea for everybody. Right. And I, I'm okay with that. Uh, do I think that I can help a lot of people with their muscular systems? And I know you guys can too. Yeah, of course. But sometimes people don't, they want to be crushed or they want, you know, it's like, which is okay. And they may flourish better in a different environment, but then, you know, they end up probably calling cause they get hurt and they're like, you got to go see, they hear it three or four times. You should go see this guy. He can be an adjunct or whatever it is. And so it's, it's kind of a, interesting thing i think we cannot reach the masses i mean what we do and how we go about it some people aren't for it some people are really for it you know it just depends and, and being okay with that it's probably the hardest thing right like yeah if i'm not okay the environments here are going to probably suck people are going to feel it right mm-hmm. if i didn't get any sleep because honor didn't want to sleep like I, when i drive to work i might drive a little slower to get my mind right because i'm like man i didn't sleep very well this dude cried okay walk in the door okay here we go right it's a real thing and so it just depends. We cannot, we can't be everything for everybody. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you're, if you're for everybody, you're for nobody. And no one's mm, going to come, mm, no one's gonna come like knock that. on your door. Yeah, yeah, no one's going to come knocking on your door. Yeah, and I definitely, when I first started this business, probably like you, Curtis, and because of the, a lot of the programs I was involved with at the beginning, I mean, I know that I could help a lot of people. And I knew that everyone that worked here could help a lot of people. So I marketed at the very beginning for the first year and a half, trying to reach out to everybody. Hey, whoever you are, if you've got some problems, we can help you. But like Len said, if you market to everyone, you get no one. So mm. it was like around year three that I really started marketing towards this 45 to 65 demographic and trying to clean things up and polish mm. it and keep it organized and make it feel like an environment that those people want to come because those are the people that we can make the biggest impact with. Those are the people who are going to commit to a process and they're not going off to school and they're not about to have kids. Mm. And those are the people that really need the information. And that was you know, I still struggle with that. But when I give advice to, and when I think about advice for myself and anybody that I talk here for mentorship in any leadership in any way is how can you set yourself up that you're a fixture on the floor? That's a part of that environment. Hmm. You walk in and Glenn's smiling and waving. And he goes, Hey, I've never met you before. How are you doing? It's nice to meet you. That instantly Yo. makes the environment more warm, more comfortable, and hopefully cater to the market that we're looking for. So it's, you're right. It's weird, right? Environment, super important what environment do you create? <laughs> right. Right. I mean, I think it's a big thing, right? I mean, and obviously you got to be good at what you do, but I think that if it doesn't resonate with the people you're trying to get, I mean, it's like, and that's the, like the guys here, I try to tell them like, how many clients do you actually need to serve and give your hundred percent to each of them? Well, I mean, I don't want to get into math, but giving it up, but give your hundred percent when they come in and how many people can you do that for? to where you still feel like you're providing a good service. You don't need a million people. You might not even need a hundred people. You need people that are going to be essentially committed to that. And I liked what you said, Brandon, that, that resonated with me is um, the fixture on the floor. My friend, that's like, you always do it to me, man. You always pop these things off, right? I'm like, Oh man, dude, he's a wordsmith. Yeah, words, <laughs> a wordsmith. You know where it came from? It was from the gym that I worked at, Persicini Fitness. And I started there 15 years ago. There were 25 trainers. And we were all competing to try and get the same pool of clients. In our demographic, there were all older folks. But it was set up, like I said at the beginning, you had the gym floor and it was this peanut gallery of like mm. you're in the middle of a circus tent of cardio machines that circled the whole gym floor. And so we spent so much time talking about, okay, you need to know this exercise mechanic stuff. But the brand that you're bringing to the table mm. You need to look good. You need to look like you're involved with that client from up there because the people that are on those treadmills warming up are the people that you're going to try and sell to next. And if they see you on your cell phone, crummy hair, squint to get your clients and doing weird stuff, that's not going to work out well. So you are a fixture on the floor. You're just like one of the machines. And that's where, you know, I don't want anybody in here, you know, if somebody comes in with a mohawk and it suits their brand, that's fine. And you're warm with people. But if you come in and you're, you're dirty and you're haggard, it's not going to work out well for lots of reasons, especially if you're in a professional high-end service quality environment. Right. So yeah, you, you are a fixture just as much as one of those Nautilus hip extension machines or anything yeah. else. I like that, man. It just resonated. Yeah, I think that's crucial. I mean, people see you. There's a new guy here, Q, right? So he's a, 
went to the internship and stuff, but dude, he's been here as much as I've been. And it's been pretty cool to see how much of an effort he's made. Like I remember I talked to Glenn and I was like, bro, you got the, you can just talk to people, bro. You got this gift, right? You just talk. And so it made people feel included and that kind of stuff. And he's done a really good job with that. And I think that, you know, he's getting busier because of that. And so he's just here. And so being like a fixture, wearing a shirt that, you know, makes us all look like a team or, you know, he brushes his teeth, which all of us do, but you know what I'm saying? Like just hearing yourself in a manner, well, we have to wear masks, but you know, like wearing a mask and looking like a Jedi. So, you know, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man, I, that actually really resonated with me. Right. Cause, cause essentially we are inserting ourselves as a part of this environment. And I know that, but it's almost like, yeah, just as much as that piece of equipment is a part of the environment or the, I guess, ecosystem, which I guess is kind of the same thing. We are just as more a part of that. Um, anyways, I'll be quiet. That's just no, resonate with me. You know me. what? The thing that I struggle with with that, and sorry, Glenn, I saw that you were about to jump in there, is um, is the, just the in-shapeness of trainers, right? Because mm. there's a lot of folks, and this is weird because it's a sensitive subject because I don't think, as we know, we, know, we have colleagues that are absolutely brilliant that aren't in a fitness shape, and they are going to outdo outstanding jobs. Um, but unfortunately, right, if you look, I think it's called anchoring in the primus effect. If you're, mm. even if you're super dope, brilliant, you've got all this incredible background and you could help any person and you charge $250 an hour. But if you don't look like how someone thinks someone should look that is a fitness professional, that's tough. Mm. And even though I don't think fitness professionals need to be fit, you have a lot more leg work to do if you're not somewhat in shape and somewhat organized. And I shouldn't say fit, but healthy looking, you know? I feel, yeah, and no, I got what you're saying which is hard. Yeah. Fit fam. Hashtag fit fam. Uh, what I was going to say is not only are we trying to insert ourselves as fixtures in our environment and the culture, but we're asking the clients to allow us, especially right. in long-term relationships to allow us to insert us into their lives as, as a person that, that they're going to see every week, Come on, every, every month, you know, every three months, whatever, but we're looking for lifelong relationships. So if we're, if we don't present ourselves as the kind of person that fits their mold, right? Like mm. I always look at it, like we always talk about like the whole, you know, you guys both have kids and you've got those tools with like the triangle that goes in the triangle, oh, yeah. in the circle. And like, we're, you know, all of the clients have like their idea of like what they need in their lives. And they have this little fitness, this little fitness shape. And they're looking for someone that's able to fill that with, mm. you know, their, you know, um, you know what I'm saying? They're yeah. looking someone to fill that shape with a trainer or someone to help them. And we have to be able to fit that mold for them. Right. Just and so the beginning, I think, well, I, 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 you know, I agree at the very beginning with this and we slowly let more of ourselves bleed, bleed into that. Right. We have to, but, but that's, but that comes down to like the culture on the gym floor and in the facility, which is they have an idea of what is going to fit in their mold and we have to at least make ourselves available a little and mm. be that fit and then over time let more of our natural shape take place because i understand it's also like people have an idea of what health and fitness is but if they really knew what health and fitness was they wouldn't need us if mm. that makes sense right so we have to look apart but then once we insert ourselves inside their ideology or their brain I, i'm saying the word insert a lot i'm Don't trying to get away from we just it. need to mold no yeah all these strata fitness process i get it because he oh. stay molded and we're strata <laughs> oh my god thank you guys it. for saving me for myself there <laughs> <laughs> yeah man glenn i like that man it's <laughs> it's true i mean it's like i mean if you look at it right like it's like it's like a it's like a first date right you do a consultation mm -hmm. i don't know many people that do a consultation at a fitness facility like you know i mean surgeons or wisdom teeth people lots of surgery sorry uh like you know they, they do that stuff right like hey do you know when we were looking for a pediatrician, like we were doing consultation, interviewing to see if they like, okay, do we vibe with this? And I think the biggest thing of figuring out what environment you're going to flourish in is people have to actually self-reflect to think about what's an environment that I think I can thrive in or flourish in. And um, they may not know, you know, they may go on Instagram or they may go on YouTube or how does, how do typically people that are like, I need to work out. I'm going to call my friend who works out. Where do you go? Right. And so I think that getting your, your, the people that you work with, when they believe in your culture and your brand and you, they want everybody to know because they've had good results or whatever it is. Right. So I think that the biggest people that can help explain our environment is our clients. Mm -hmm. Right. And we have, every time they come in the door, it's a chance to build value. It's a 
excuse me, it's a chance to build value. It's a chance to show them, hey, you're more than just a number to me. You're more than just a dollar sign. Like I know it's a business. Like I, I have to pay for these lights that are on. I have to do these things. I have to, you know, contribute uh, to our family and our finances, right? That's a real thing. But if when people feel that that's all you're about, again, that safety net or that's, that wall goes up and we can't help them, right? And so I think that's pretty crucial. And, and back to Brandon's point about like, quote unquote, looking the part, right? It's almost like the, yeah, you're good. The look up and down, right? Yeah, they're fit. They're healthy. They move well. Okay, that's great. And it's tough because there are a lot of colleagues that we know that are, I believe, very brilliant. And it's hard to get those type of people if you're in more of like a quote unquote gym scenario. If you're like, because I would say ours is more like a, a gym setup, kind of like your guys is we do, you know, muscle health stuff to make sure and check in on your system and how you're doing these exercises and stuff. But it just depends. It's kind of a weird thing because there's some brilliant people out there. And if you don't fit their mold in their head, which could be a bias, right? Like that's their bias of what things should be. It can almost hinder them. And it's, it's hard to get them out of their own way. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, dude, I like that for sure. Yeah. It's funny because when you go through, I want to call it personal training school. I don't know what people call those certifications. The word culture like doesn't come up at all. Like and I, I did a, the, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, CSCS, which is like, it's a pretty mm-hmm. in-depth, like you have to have university education and you have to study for a long time. Culture doesn't come up once. No. It's all like science, 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 plyometrics, agility, strength training, you know, da, 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 da. And, and then they talk and, about, then they talk about, hang, make sure you hang a mirror 18 inches off the ground. Okay. Is, is that in there? <laughs> yeah, dude. I, that, was a, the que- that was like one of the questions I missed when I took that test. I was like... <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Facility okay. design questions. I, I think this is why being a successful fitness professional, it's making enough money to make a living and have a house and a car is so hard because I think everyone thinks you need to be a certified strength and conditioning, holistic, super muscle, neuromuscular, rehabilitative mm. practitioner with all this matrix, whatever you want to call it. It's all ingred- embedded in there. That's all about the certification. I literally just been interviewing a potentially a new guy to work here and he's telling me about all the educational stuff I'm doing and he's doing which I think the technical components really only one of five components. You need to have mm. business acumen. You need to have communication skills. You need to have creativity because you can't be creative on the floor and improvise on the fly with communication and tech, what you do technically you're screwed. And then last, you need to always be self and reassessing with a mastery like approach. And if you have these five things and you're constantly working at them, then you can be a true professional that you right. could aim at making. If you want six figures a year doing this, so you can aim for that, but it's not just, Hey, I know a lot about squat techniques. And if your foot goes valgus, I know what to do. It's not Mm. just that. It's like you're saying, it's how do you, how do you talk? How do you look? How are you thinking about things? Can you look, there's a great exercise that, um, oh my gosh, was it Seth Godin? Malcolm Gladwell, um, in outliers, he was talking about that uh, this company does and we're going to do, Oh yeah. is he talks about, he 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 says, how many different uses can you come up with for a brick and a blanket? Love it. Yeah. I think that's amazing, right? That you get a lot, you get a lot of information about how somebody, think, somebody thinks about things. I think that's what we need to do in the gym. Hey, you got a free weight. Let's not pick a free weight. Everyone picks barbells. You got an elastic band. How many different things can you do with this elastic band? How many different uses? And then if you can get that creativity high, how creative you can be with your words and your delivery, mm-hmm. how creative you can be with the way you approach a business, all that stuff comes into play. I think it's all, all right. important, but it makes it hard. It's not just easy walking into a pretty place. I'm sure like Q can attest walking into a pretty place, getting a bunch of paperwork, learn some technical stuff. It's not just, like that, you know, <laughs> right. you got to go to the mall and chat with people. You got to right. look the part. You got to present yourself. It's, it's tough. For sure, man. For sure. Which is, I'll tell you guys though. I love it. Of I know course. you guys do too. I love it, man. I, I love being able to pour into people's lives and show them how much exercise can help them for multiple, you know, multiple avenues, multiple facets. And I really enjoy that. I really just like people. I like helping people. I think that's my real passion is helping people. And obviously I love the human body and learning about it. And that's a big part of like my obsession. Uh, but being able to help and walk alongside somebody, reach their goals and seeing them do it, right? Cause we're just helping. Yeah. They're, they're making the effort. And that's a big thing too, is when they realize like, wow, I am my biggest hero. I am my big, I, I can do this. Right. And then when they realize that I'm here to help facilitate, educate and that kind of stuff and potentially build out a program that they can make sure they lock in and understand the nuances of the little things in it. I love that man. Just help people, you know, and I think that's the environment we've built here is people feel like they will help you help yourself, you know? So 
Yeah. Which is and cool. If you've, got, if you've got people that are all on the same mission and they view you the same and the environment the same and the goals the same, it makes the whole tribe, Dude. just all the cogs tribe. mesh together. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome. It's, I love it. It's almost like you're talking about having a good culture. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm crazy. You know what it reminds me of is there was a story. So when I was in Oklahoma taking the RTS mastery thing with Tom Purvis, I remember and like the first weekend, I had this one client that was just driving me bonkers. And I mean, if you worked at a gym, you worked at a gym and you've been handed a client that was sold training mm. and they don't really want to be there, but they're invested in the process and you got to kind of ride it out and work with them and they're not getting what they want. And they're a really hard to work with person. That hour can feel like six hours, yeah. seven hours of amazing people. And then one hour just crushes you. I said, Tom, <laughs> what should I do with this guy? I got this guy on my schedule. He works hard, but he just drives me nuts. He goes, how much does he drive you nuts? I'm like, what? He goes, well, like, how much do you charge? And then would you say he drives you more nuts than what you're getting paid? I said, yes. He goes, then charge them double. I said, what? <laughs> I said, well, charge them what they're worth and how crazy they are and how crazy they make you feel. And I don't think that's super great because I right. tried to do that and he left. But what actually worked out was I had a great, <laughs> left, I had a great group of people that didn't drive me crazy. And, the, and I don't mean that to sound no negative, but they all kind of saw what we were talking about. They all saw the direction we were going with how important exercises in their lifelong journey. And even today, like five or six of those people are still with me. And it's right. amazing. We're still thinking about the same things we were nearly 10 years ago. I love it, man. Environment. I love it. Environment, hey. man. I, I'm not trying to cut this short, but I got to bounce a little bit. We got a little bit, a little bit of time. We're gonna have to do another one with the modes. hundred percent. We'll talk about the modes for sure. Yeah, this was, this, this was in dope tech. <laughs> this was meaty man i love it environment uh, well if you got a little bit more time there's something that we do every episode and it. it's the pick of the week and essentially it's just something that you're enamored with that you like doing it can be technology a book a tv show something in your personal life it doesn't matter what it is it can be anything there are no constraints but it's just something that's an aside from the exercise stuff that that we usually talk about just like you know a fun little anecdote to end the episode so curtis clay what is your pick of the week pick of the week uh, pick? My pick of the week is little kids' shoes. Oh, go! Uh, this is I, new. Continue. I feel like we should one, end right? the podcast. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> we should go a bad direction real quick. Yeah, Just not the, the other smell route. Of them. <laughs> so my my daughter, right? We're, we've been in COVID and quarantine, and her feet continue to grow. Right, they're they're growing, and so she wants uh she wanted some some sandals like mommy. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't make and mommy wears slides around the house, right? Those slides, and so she, we can't find kids' slides that are that size. And so um, I had to go to the mall first time I've ever left this area because I had to go return a bassinet that did not work for honor. Um, but I found these sandals. I was like, Jack, you think these will work? I think these will work, you know? And she's becoming more independent and stuff. And she likes to put her shoes on herself and stuff. And so these, they Velcro on the side. And it's so funny because I looked at all the different kids' sandals and the selection was not very good, but I was like, these will work. And I brought them home and she was like obsessed. She won't, she won't wear them outside because she can't wear them in the house then. So she wants to wear them in the house like mommy. But it's funny to me, like reflecting upon that, it's how just the little things as a child excite us. Mm. And I think that res so I guess it's not really the kid's sandals. This resonated with me because it's like, do the little things excite me as an adult, right? Helping that client feel better, helping this. And like, wow, I have a roof over my head. I have a car that runs and can get me from point A to point B. So I think that that was kind of a reminder to me on the little things to appreciate those little things like this conversation. Like I really enjoy the times that we can talk, you know, and digital transformation and all that kind of stuff or whatever mm -hmm. it is, or how are you doing? I think it's just a little thing. So I would say kids sandals were a good reminder to me that the little things should bring us joy, you know? That's a fantastic pick of the week. Glenn, what's your pick of the week? <laughs> I don't think I, I mean, mine's not, mine's not deep like Curtis's, um, but it is, you know, it's funny because I said, like you said like kid shoes and I said, oh, like new, like new kid shoe smell. Like it's interesting. So I was having a conversation. <laughs> I love the kid said, shoe smell. <laughs> okay. So here, hear me out. He said like, like my pick of the week is like, like, you know, kids shoes or something. Then I said, yeah, like I love the way they smell. And what I meant by that is like, you ever get that new, that new thing smell, like new car smell, like fresh shoe smell. Like even when you unwrap technology for the first time, mm. it's got this kind of freshness to it. It kind of goes back to what you were saying, which is like this kind of just like the scent of something new happening. Do you know what I mean? Like of a yeah. fresh start. Like I, we're recording right now on a new laptop that I got less than a week ago. 
um, uh, that I got for business and processing and creating stuff. And like, it came out of the package and I'm just like a new adventure, like same stuff's going on though, but it's like a new adventure. And it's made right. me very excited. So my pick of the week is new thing smells. You know, <laughs> when you get something new, it's got that like plastic wrap on a flat surface and you just like, Oh yeah, off. absolutely. Oh, that's satisfying. Absolutely. So good. Um, so my pick of the week. So when I like to pick a pick of the week, I always try to pick something that's like most, the most recent thing that inspires me and that's helping me and really getting me fired up. And my pick of the week is going to be a bit cheesy, but Curtis Clay, it's you. Oh, Oh man. No, Coming and it's hot. honestly, it's your digital transformation stuff and time you spent because we've been doing paperwork and keeping notes. And I think data and note collection as you two, we, you both agree is so crucial, but I think moving forward into the next steps are important. So if you're someone who's a personal trainer, a muscle specialist, listen to mm -hmm. this show and you're looking to, I mean, Curtis does consulting to help with this. He's got this digital transformation process. And if you're looking to take your process to the next level and really challenge yourself and enter into the tech world, Talk to Curtis. So Curtis, you're my pick of the week because you get me yeah. fired up about tech and implementing into the business. So thank you. I, pr I appreciate that. It fires me up, man. Like I know last week we met and I was like, all like, yeah, it worked, you know, and here you guys decided, you know, but yeah, dude, it'll be good, man. I love that. And I mean, it's just a way to be more, ma uh, not mainstream, to be more um, streamlined, you know, like just kind of boom, 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 communication is better. And it's saved me so much time and it just, it's just another touch. It's a little touch, right? So, which is great. Cool, man. So, Curtis, thank you so much for your time, man. This was a blast. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we'll set up another one too when I when I can get off, get to work a little early so that uh, we got the nanny to come over a little bit earlier. So we'll go over modes that time. That'll be fun. So everybody, this is Brandon. This is Glenn. This is Dope Dad, Curtis. <laughs> Curtis. And we want all of you exercising pain-free being molded into a multi-strata fitness process to help you get the results that it. you want. I love it. Take care, buddy. All we'll talk to you all soon. All right, Ciao, deal. Pal. Later.